All right, time for lesson 1.9, adding and subtracting mixed numbers with unlike denominator. So please write the I can statement in your math notebook and don't forget to put the lesson number at the top of the page. The good news is, ladies and gentlemen, that we've been doing a lot of practice with adding fractions with different denominators, but you absolutely must, I mean must, I mean you have to, you've got to remember, you must remember that you cannot add or subtract fractions unless the denominator, that number at the bottom of the fraction, is the same. If it's not, you have to change them, okay? So as we're going through this today, you're gonna to see me doing a lot of things with common denominators. And if your fractions don't have a common denominator, they have to get there before you can add and subtract. Did I mention they have to be there? Because they really do, okay? So let's get started. So we're gonna start with adding mixed numbers with different denominators. As you can see here, I've got three and one fourth plus two and seven twelfths. Can't do anything with those right now because they don't have a common denominator. Okay, remember they have to have common denominator? We've talked about that. Okay, so remember, common denominator, very important. So I look at this fraction here, and I realize right away that 4 is a factor of 12. Now, you could multiply these to get 48, but I realize right away I don't have to do that. I don't have to make my fraction that big. So 4 is a factor of 12, so I'm just going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. And when I do that, that's going to give me 3 and 3 twelfths plus the original 2 and 7 twelfths that I had. When I add up the fractions, I get 10 twelfths. When I end up the whole number, I get 5. But I realize right away when I look at this that this is not in simplest form. That is something we really want to start working towards, is making sure that our um, all the fractions we put down are in, in simplest form. So we've got 10 twelfths. I know 2 is a factor of both of those numbers. So if I divide that down, I get 5 and 5 sixths. And that would be my final answer for that one. Now let's look at the next one. I've got 4 and 2 thirds plus 3 and 5 sixths. Again, here I've got a 3 as a factor of 6, so I can leave 6 as my denominator and just turn, turn this into 6. So by doing so, I'm just going to multiply a numerator and denominator by 2. It gives me 4 and 4 sixths plus 3 and 5 sixths. If I add those together, I get 9 sixths for the fraction and 7 for the whole number. I notice right away here I've got a fraction that's greater than 1. So again, I have to convert that because I don't want to leave it sitting like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 7 and I'm going to take 9, 6 and break it into 6, 6 plus 3, 6. And you can see 6 plus 3 is still 9. I'm going to cross out the 6, 6, which is for the whole number of 1. So now when I add this up, I've got 7 plus 1 plus 3, 6, which is 8 and 3, 6. And this is still not in lowest terms because I recognize that this is equal to 1 half. So the answer there is 8 and 1 half. Okay, now let's look at adding and subtracting mixed numbers with different denominators. And by the way, I have a fly here who's driving me crazy. So if you see me swatting around, I haven't lost my mind. Um, but we're going we're gonna to adding fractions with different denominators. And this time, one is not going to be the factor of the other. So we do need to have some practice with these. So let's take a look at this. I've got 2 and 5, 2 and 2 fifths and 1 and 10 elevenths. I'm going to have to multiply these two numbers together. So my common denominator is going to end up being 55 now. So I've got 2 and 22 55ths plus 1 and 50 55ths. So I get 72 55ths when I add those together. And I get the whole number 3. Again, I've got a fraction greater than 1. So I'm going to convert that. So I've got 55 55ths plus 17 55ths. I'm going to cross out the 55, and that's going to give me the whole number 1, and it gives me 4 and 17 55ths. Now, I don't have to do anything else with this number because I know that 17 is a prime number. So it's 1 and 17 are the only two numbers I can multiply that are going to give me that. So I'm good on that one. Now let's take a look at another one. I've got 6 and 4 sevenths plus 1 and a half. And if I look at 1 and 1 half, I can make 7 times 2 here. It's going to end up making my common denominator 14. So I'm going to make these both into 14 So I've got 6 and 8 14 plus 1 and 7 14 When I add that 8 and 7, I get 15 14 And when I add my whole numbers, I get a whole number of 7. But again, I've got that fraction greater than 1. So just like we've done in the last part, I'm going to stretch that out. I'm going to cross out the one hole there, and I'm going to make the one above it. So when I add that together, I end up with 8 and 1 14ths, and that is also in lowest terms this time, so I don't have to do anything further than that. Now let's look at subtracting mixed numbers. Okay, So when we subtract, sometimes we're going to have to do multiple steps here. So you're just going to have to be patient with yourself as you're working through these and give yourself some time to understand them. So I've got 5 and 1 half and 4 and 7 eighths. 2 is a factor of 8, so I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 4. 
It gives me five and four eighths, but I notice right away that four eighths will not be able to take away the seven eighths that I have down here. So I'm going to have to borrow. All right. So I'm going to borrow from the five and make it a four. I'm going to take and I'm going to add eight eighths to the four eighths that I have because my one whole is now going to be eight eighths, kind of the opposite of what we did just a minute ago. And that gives me four and twelve eighths. When you borrow in this case, you're always going to have with a fraction greater than one, which I need here because I can't subtract seven eighths without it. So now I'm going to do a simple subtraction problem. Twelve take away seven is five eighths, and four take away four is zero. You can write the zero down, but you don't have to. Now let's take a look at another one. I've got six and eight twelfths minus three and one sixth. In this case, six is a factor of twelve again. All right, so I can multiply the denominator here by two. That gives me six and eight twelfths minus three and two twelfths. Okay, when I subtract that out, I get six twelfths. Eight take away two is six. And when I do six take away three, I get three. In this case, I didn't have to borrow or anything. That was kind of nice. All right. When I see that I've got six twelfths, I need to make sure that I put that in lowest common terms. That's three and one half. Now. When we look at this again, you could have divided the numerator here, in this case, by 2 if you wanted to. Some of you may have seen that. The advantage of that is it does get it to lower terms, but not always simplest terms. All right. So I could have done it this way, making that 6 and 4, 6, minus 3 and 1, 6, 4, 3, 6, which, again, will equal 3 and 3, 6 is going to equal 3 and a half, just like I did in the previous problem. All right. So division can work. I know most kids right now are more comfortable doing the multiplication route, but some of you might want to try the division route if you'd like to do that. Okay. So let's look at our next subtraction problem. I've got 11 and 2 thirds minus 9 and 3 fourths. Again, these are not, I'm going to have to multiply these to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply and make them into twelfths. twelfths. So I've got 11 and 2 eight, two eighths, 8 twelfths, and I've got 9 and 9 twelfths. Right away I recognize I cannot take 8, I cannot take 9 away from 8, so I'm going to borrow. 11 becomes 10, I'm going to add that 12 twelfths to that for a total of 20 twelfths. Now I can put the original subtraction problem underneath there. I've got 20 take away 9, that's going to give me 11 twelfths. Okay, and 10 take away 9 is 1. So 1 and 1 twelfth is my final answer here because 11 is a prime number. It can't go any lower. All right. So let's look at our next one. 4 and 1 ninth, 2 and 2 fifths. I'm going to multiply these to get a common denominator because neither is a factor of the other number. And I'm going to multiply both top and bottom so I can get a common denominator of 45. So I've got 4 and 5 40 fifths and 2 and 18 40 fifths when I do that. Again, 5 45ths cannot take away 18, so I'm going to borrow again, make that 4 a 3. I'm going to add 45 45ths to this for a total of 3 and 50 45ths. I can put the original subtraction problem under there now. I've got 50 take away 18, and that's going to give me 32 45ths. And I'm 3 take away 2 is 1. That is also in lowest common terms because 32 and 45 do not share any other factors in common. All right, so now it's your turn. Here are your practice problems. I'm going to add or subtract and be sure to show your work. And as I reminded you before, please write down the problem, copy the problems as you see them in your book. And then as you, I want to see the work that you're doing to convert those fractions. And I want to see your answers as well. All right, and in simplest terms, please. If you have any questions about that, we'll discuss them in class tomorrow. All right, see ya.